Okay, this is our Indian rough out. He's a nine inch diameter piece, about 30 inches tall, maybe 32. You can see we just get ready to mount him on our Wilton vise and uh, what they call a power arm vise. You put it in position, push it down, locks it in place. Then we're not, we're gonna need to start out with a gas saw on this one. Well, the reason I got the gas saw here is uh, got a little more power and uh, it's actually a little sharper than my battery saw at the time, so I decided to go with it. So as you can see, we uh, just got plug knocked off his head and uh, we're fixing to uh, cut out the, like a little plug that's in between his legs and we're gonna take it out. And then we got the hole cut out in front of his leg there, so we're going to just now start putting the hair on his, uh, coming off of his uh, side of his head there, and his, uh, his hair wraps. We, uh, we got a couple of feathers on the side, just mainly just going in and drawing uh, where stuff is to finding it. And uh, that's pretty much, you know, the main thing to the rough out. The main shape is already there. All you gotta do is go in and uh, just start putting a little detail on. But right here we're working on these hair, hair wraps. Putting the necklace in. I got a bear claw necklace. We're putting the claws on this necklace here. To say they are already there, we just trying to define them where you can see them a little better. A lot of carvers take these and turn them completely in their own. Uh, you know, uh, they still have a basic shape there, but you know, there's lots of room if you want to really work them over and uh, change it, you know. The fastest way is to pretty much keep it what you got, but uh, you can always take more wood away than there, you know, and uh, totally change the look of it. Here we are just going around detailing the feathers and drawing the fringe on his jacket and stuff. Yeah, he had lots of feathers and, you know, fringe on his jacket and we gave him a turtle shell for a, a shield and uh, it's just, uh, like I say, a lot of drawing to, to bring all the crispness out so it's, you know, you have the, you know, the hard line that make him show up. As you see here, another good thing about that vise is uh, you can tilt it over to put a lot of detail in that sometimes uh, a little bit pain in the butt doing it standing up and you can just lay it down and get a better angle at it. So that's another reason I like to use these vices. But I bought mine off of eBay. They're pretty expensive vices, but uh, sometimes you can find them on eBay for a pretty good price. Here we are drawing around his knife on his hip, putting a fringe down the back of his pants. Well, my, I should follow, you know, more references now. I used to do it a lot. But nowadays, I just fake it, I guess. <laughs> Try to carve what I think a face looks like. You know, but, you know, really and truly, if I'm trying to get a really good face, you should never do it without some kind of reference. Yeah, we're back to the battery saw here, putting in some of the little bit of smaller details. It ain't a lot of heavy carving. I use the gas saw for cutting out between your legs and stuff. It gets a little quicker on the bigger cuts.
the size of wood and the uh, you know, length of time on the machine usually dictates the price of a rough house. Yeah, I think this this rough out here, you know, saw work probably 15 to 20 minutes on it. So, you know, we pretty much through the saw there. Now we go break out a few power tools and see if we can't put the, you know, put his nose in a little better, put his eyes in. It's really the size, you know, that matches the carving, so. I have a wide range of uh, different size eye tools. And here I just got a big fine saber tooth flame, which works really good for running over it and knocking off a lot of that fuzz that uh, is on the outside of the carving without carving too much wood away. I think the few pieces that we have that has a lot of detail in it that takes, you know, a little bit longer. So we, you know, then, you know, for its size over other ones that may cost a little more. But uh, for the most part, most of them all, if it's a nine inch piece of wood, you know, 30, 32 inches in height, they all pretty much fall in the same price range. We're sanding the base up there now. We'll get that all cleaned up. As you can see, we're just brushing him down, getting him all cleaned up. But like I say, these type bits work really good for the fur. Uh, just getting the big fur off. You can, uh, you know, we're still burning to get the fine stuff off, but I find it's. Uh, way more economical to use the saber bit to clean the big fuzz off before you burn it because uh, it just sands off better than it burns off and thick. Now once it gets thin, the fire does a better job. Radial brushes, they're impregnated with a uh, type of abrasive that uh, helps them sand. This is the coarsest one. Uh, well, that's about it on the brush. Probably gets a little fire here. And uh, give them a little cook job. And now we got our fire. Here we are, you see, just trying to burn the stripe on his headdress. Uh, and it's just kind of like painting with fire. You burn it hard in spots and light in spots. Which we're going to stain this here in a little while. So, uh, you know, if you're going to stain it, you would just burn it lightly to get, get the fuzz off. Uh, but now if, if you were going to burn it for color, you do a little more hard burning and, you know, in certain spots. It's just kind of like painting. So wherever you think. You can see we got a little light coming through our barn door there. The sun's starting to set. I thought we'd kind of go over the stuff that we use basically on coloring our carvings here. Uh, our main things, I got some dyes here that I call, made by Mixall that you can mix with just about anything. Uh, I use basically water for the 90% of it. Uh, mix, you know, the dye with water. It's real easy to keep clean in my airbrush and stuff. But what I probably use even more than the colors is uh, men wax stain. I like golden oak. It's probably my favorite light color. And then I use provincial and black walnut for my dark colors.
Men might make hundreds of different colors of stains, but I basically use two uh, for 90% of what I do. And as far as airbrush system, I got cheap Harbor Freight airbrush uh, stuff, or you can get them on eBay, 15 bucks or so for airbrush. And uh, that's about what we use for uh, coloring our carvings. Hope this helps. Well, we should get our black walnut out again, uh, our go-to color for our darks, and just go around tracing it all around, uh, around the eyes, uh, hat band, draw in all the cuts where his uh, hair wrap is, we color his hair, just streak it down just like you would hair, and draw all the feathers in, the lows and highs. Put a dark streak across the top of his feathers, you know, so his necklace pops out. Uh, I use the dark to draw the the fringe on his pants and his sleeves of his uh, shield. Get all that laid in front and back. We'll kind of put a dark streak across the top of his feathers so that they, you know, have a, a black and a white kind of a golden eagle look to it. Once we get all that laid down, we'll get the red out, put it on his uh, hair wraps, and then I used a little of a, bit of a brown to uh, differentiate the top of his hat band. And after that, get the quick dust in the gold note for his clothes and stuff to make them uh, kind of butt skinny. And that was about all he is to an Indian. And, uh, you know, it takes a little bit longer. There's more of it to draw on, but uh, just hope you have fun with it. It gets you some colors, and you can paint it as bright as you want or or, or dull as you want. But uh, I like to tend to stay with the wood colors myself. But that's it today. We'll catch you on the next one.